not just beyond a reasonable doubt, but beyond all doubt, uh, according to the Bible now, that Jesus was not born uh, of a virgin, uh, which by definition means he's not the Son of God. If he's not the Son of God, then the uh, Christian doctrine that God had his Son die on the cross for our sins goes out the window too. Uh, ravaging much of Christianity. Uh, I know this is very, very hard for your audience to believe. The only problem is that it happens to be the truth. And this is one reason why many people reading the Divinity of Doubt say that no one who reads this book will ever again feel the same way about God and religion. I want to touch very briefly on atheism. I view atheism as uh, an intellectually barren philosophy whose current champions, I'm talking about people like Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, uh, Richard Dawkins, these guys simply cannot find a non-sequitur that they don't like. It's just one silly non-sequitur uh, after another. They well, for me, atheists are basically saying we know everything, and it's almost a religion that there's nothing. I mean, how do they know out of hundreds of billions Absolutely. of galaxies that there aren't entities and civilizations that are beyond anything we could even imagine God uh, you know, uh, having? I mean, I mean, to state that it's basically saying they know everything. Oh, I know that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, where, uh, uh, no one knows whether or not God or, uh, exists or not. But if he doesn't, I do not believe that atheistic dogma leads one. Rationally well, here's what I'm saying, Vincent. Conclusion. A lot of people have had prescient events, psychic events. Uh, you know, knowing that Grandma just died, calling even though she wasn't sick. Yeah, Grandma just died. How'd you know that? I mean, I've had things like that happen. Like, I'm not even going to get into it. It's ridiculous. I was yes. fishing. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and tell the story. Yeah. I, I, no, I, 6 a.m. driving out with a guide. I've been out there many times. Port Aransas. Never run over a dolphin. Uh, never heard anybody running over a dolphin. The dolphins are super smart. And I have this super strong feeling we're going to run over a dolphin. Three minutes later, we run over a dolphin. Yeah, now, now, come on. There's stuff going on we don't know about. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. But that doesn't mean that there's a God who created the universe uh, because of that. But there okay. are paranormal things going on. I don't reject it. Listen, I'm an agnostic. Now, let me explain to you now, because I think your, 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 your audience should know this. Theists, of course, believe in God, right? Uh, atheists do not believe in God. An agnostic says, I don't know. Perhaps a better definition of agnostic is someone who believes that the existence vis-a-vis -vis non-existence of God is unknowable. Of course, if it's unknowable, you can't know. Now, I like to point out that there's a rather bright guy on my side. At least people tend to think he's bright. His name is Einstein. Einstein was an agnostic. Interestingly enough, Darwin turns out to be an agnostic. I say interestingly enough, uh, uh, Alex, because most evolutionists uh, are, are atheists, and yet the founder of evolution, Darwin, turns out to be an agnostic. My view uh, on the existence of God, it's an impenetrable mystery. It's beyond human comprehension. Uh, as Einstein said, the problem is too vast for our limited minds. Uh, and I think the most responsible position to take uh, on this issue, on the eternal question... He also of God said existence, God would not play dice. He said God would not play dice with reality. Yes, okay, very sharp, very sharp. I'm, ag I'm, I'm against a, a tough uh, cross-examiner. He said many things throughout his life. No one's been quoted more on, on, on God than Einstein. Many things during his life that gave fodder to theists, atheists, and agnostics. See, he's one of our own, and that's one of them right there. God does not play dice with the universe. The inference being, okay, he believes in God. But the only time I ever found where he used one of these appellations uh, was in a letter, I think it was October 25th, 1950, five years before he died, to an M. Berkowitz at the Princeton Archives, where he said, on the matter of God, I am an agnostic. That's the only time that I ever heard him use one of these words. But that's very good. You interjected something there, but very important. Uh, I love the uh, non-literary articulation of agnosticism by Gertrude Stein. You know who she is. She said, there ain't no answer. There ain't going to be any answer. There never has been an answer. That's the answer. Uh, the great uh, criminal lawyer of years ago, Clarence Darrow, said, I don't purport to know what ignorant men are sure of. Now, there's many other things we can talk about today. Uh, I don't believe the Christian God can possibly exist. He's a contradiction in terms. You can't be all good and all powerful at the same time. You can no, be Christ, Christ said that this is parables. Uh, the profane aren't going to understand this. And I read the Bible. It makes perfect sense. Those contradictions are subtleties in the context 
of the area they're being discussed, and then it all later integrates together. I, I, I yeah. Well, I, I discuss. The, I, I mean, I take the lilies of, of the field. I mean, come I, on. I discuss all of that. I, but but Christianity and Judaism believe that God is all powerful and all good. He can be one or the other. He can't be both. Uh, for example, if you're all powerful, uh, that means you can prevent evil. And if you can prevent evil, you don't allow the the, the Holocaust. But God to refuses to create robots. It's free will. Well, so, I, just, so, I just told you. Wait a while. I, wait a while. Well, the globalists say I don't have free will because then they want to tell me what to do because they've got their will. They want me rudderless. Look, I got free will. I know I do. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's free will or not. Let, let's assume, even though I told you that the Bible says there's no free will, let's assume that there is free will. And you hear what Christians say. You're all given free will. God's not responsible for all for how you exercise. You, you've heard that many, many times. Okay. Well, there are the Calvinists who say that we don't have free That's will. That's exactly right. And what a what a horrible idea! I, I'm a slave, and 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 then and then and, 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 and God chose some to be evil, some to be good. This is all a test. Well, Martin Martin Luther, the founder of Protestantism, here's what he says. He says, "Quote: God foreknows and wills all things. He foresees, intends, and does all things according to His own eternal and infallible will." He said, quote, this knocks free will flat. I'm not saying Luther is, is right, but he's the guy that founded Protestantism. He says, this knocks free will flat and utterly shatters it. Uh, he says that man's will is free only to the extent of doing, quote, the will of God, that man can do no, no good except no. through God's Look, grace. Look, I already know no, it in my gut, just knows, experiencing just creation. We do free have will, free but... will, but also there's providence. God does move through individuals if they're willing. That's the free will to turn yourself over as a vessel. Then okay. there's those that have given themselves over to evil. Then God will also use them. It's more complex than that. Okay, I know that. But I, I get into the complexity and the divinity of doubt. But I want to ask you a question. i got a tough question for you because you've okay. asked me some very good questions. Uh, the, the Christians say, uh, God gives you all free will, and therefore he's not responsible for it. Okay, I, I don't buy into that. Uh, number one, he's also omniscient, so he knew what the monsters of history were going to do before they did it. Number two, he's supposed to be all-powerful. He knew they were going to do it. He didn't step in, okay? He did not prevent all Because the soul's things. immortal. It's a test. I haven't asked you my question yet. All right. Uh, so that's their argument, that he's not responsible. Uh, let's take a hypothetical, Alex. You have parents, and they have a son, they call him Eddie, 17 years old, and he's robbing, raping, and murdering uh, everyone in his area of town. Uh, the police don't know about it, but the parents do, and uh, they have the power to stop him. But they say, you know, Eddie's got free will, and uh, I'm not responsible for how he exercises, so I'm not going to try to stop him. What would you think of those parents? Uh, they would be Satanist. Okay, well, why, if God does the same identical thing, why do you have uh, a supposedly good view of him that he gives us free will he's not responsible how, 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 how do you how, how do you reconcile because by the very nature of creation it is the individual decision to do good or evil that is set in motion and so of course god knows the final outcome uh, but it is something that has to be played out because that's the nature of the space-time continuum d uh, dimensional overlay is that it must be free. Well, if you were on the witness stand uh, after a half hour, I think you'd have to back down from this because there's nothing no. solid. There's nothing solid uh, uh, in what you said. Someone did say, "Well, God is supernatural." Uh, well, wait, you awesome. just said wait, wait. that's like declaring the moon declaratively is made of cheese. Uh, I mean, that might fool you know somebody uh, who's got a low IQ on the on one of the jurors. But come on, I said something. Something pretty heavy there. Okay, but factually, uh, it doesn't make any difference whether it's God or the. the, the yeah, parents. but here's it, the it, here's it, the it, difference, Mr. Bugliosi. I've had experiences I won't even share on air. Okay. okay, let me tell you, this stuff is not vapors or hallucinations. The experiences I've had in my life that are mine and I'm and they're personal. Let me tell you, there's a lot going on in heaven and earth that aren't in all your books. Well, I agree on that. I agree, and I don't reject it. I, uh, I'm an agnostic. I don't reject what you're saying. There's a lot of paranormal things going on. That doesn't necessarily mean, however, that there's a God who created of the universe okay. doesn't necessarily mean that, but there are strange things going on. A a, a twin is uh, is brutalized by some thugs. And uh, his twin uh, across the country feels the pain at the same time. Oh, it's all real. It's all real. Yeah, no, we only saying, see a tiny mean, fraction of reality. But that doesn't translate necessarily to a God who created the universe. Well, okay, let me ask you this question. I always had a dream, a recurring dream, till I was about twelve. I had it almost every week where I would go to the very edge of the universe. I had it from the time I was like a baby, first memories, till I was 12 or 13, then I stopped having it. Very intense. 
uh, studying it, you know, scientifically, you could say it was a low oxygen dream. Something like that could manifest this. But it would be the great question of what happens at the end of the universe, what created matter to begin with. Okay, Big Bang, what was before that? And, and, and then you have to ask, what is this dimensional creation? And then at the end of the dream, I was just gasping for air uh, in the incredible presence of uh, something so indescribable that it... It, it it simply envisioned creation. I mean, I mean, come on, uh, Vincent. What what made all this then? I mean, where does it end? Where did it come from? Can't know. you feel? That's, can't that's, you feel it? Don't you feel Alex, it? That's why I said I'm an agnostic. That's why Einstein and Darwin were agnostics. Talking about going all the way back, I want to give you a good argument that theism, those that believe in God, have come up with. And you, you probably, well, I'm sure you know about it. It goes back to the 13th century. Thomas Aquinas, his yes. Summa Theologica, uh, first cause. First cause means that uh, everything in existence, whether it's a peach on a tree, uh, a car, uh, a shoe, was caused by something else, and that in turn was caused by something else. I'm going to get into the Big Bang in a moment here now. Uh, but this regression in the chain of causation, it's believed, cannot go back into infinity. It has to go back to something which was not caused by anything else, which was independent. Uh, Aquinas called it the first cause, the uncaused cause, uh, 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 if you will. Uh, and that uncaused cause, that first cause, theists believe is God. Now, how do the atheists and the scientists get around it? Well, they come up with the Big Bang Theory, which holds that at some point in time, about 13.7 billion years ago, the universe exploded into existence in a zillionth of a second from some subatomic uh, particle. Now, apart from the fact that on its face it doesn't seem to make sense, that the universe could explode into existence from something much, much smaller than the point of a needle. Let's give the, the, uh, uh, the physicists their due. We don't understand these things. But there's also, I think, a very enormous defect with that reasoning. No matter how small that subatomic particle was, no matter how small it was, it was something. And let me repeat, it was something. And the question is, and I went over to Caltech, read the books on it, the, the, the authors don't address themselves the question, which is an automatic question, who put that something there? They don't ask that question, you follow? And what so, made that something? That's right, I agree, I agree. But are we going back to a first cause, as Aquinas says, and that first cause is God? I don't know. I'm not saying that first cause is dispositive of the issue, but it's a very difficult logical argument to get around. Well, look, the point is we don't know what's going on. I can feel the presence of the energy source that creates all life in the universe and uh i just feel so sorry for these atheists because they are they, they've like put the blinders on uh you've got to be open to it to experience and be right back well i want to be clear i have a personal relationship with jesus christ and i am a christian and people can analyze it all day and you know say that a christian god's impossible and find contradictions uh, you know, it's all a intellectual, uh, but at the same time, personal and spiritual experience. And it's also, um, you know, one person reads poetry and sees ugly poetry. Someone else sees something beautiful. But that's why I wanted to get Vincent Bugliosi on today, because I think that by talking to him in this big book he's got out right now, uh, that it uh, gets people to, to, you know, really think about the nature of the world. I just wonder why world leaders are trying to build a 10-union nation global government and trying to bring in this cashless society to track us. I, I, I guess you would say, Vincent, that all this Big Brother stuff, that's just basically people taking the Bible and using it as a blueprint or revelations? No, no. I, I don't know why they're doing that. I'd have to study it. I'd have to study it. Uh... Okay, so what's your view on the Big Bang, then? Where did it all come from? Keebler Elves? Uh... What, what I just told you right now is that the Big Bang, Big Bang may not be valid. It may be God who created the universe. I gave you an argument for God. Uh, the atheists have yet to come up, in my opinion, with one persuasive argument uh, for God. All they come up with is nonsense, non sequiturs. I'll give you a couple of their non sequiturs. If God existed, they say, why do we have all the horror and evil in the world? But that presupposes that God has to be all good, which is an obvious non sequitur. He obviously can be all powerful without also being all good. I'll give you another one, another non sequitur. Atheists do not believe that God created man. You know, they believe that man evolved from some original life form. You know, uh, bacteria somehow evolved into Mozart. But that presupposes that God did not create this original life form and evolution took over from there. Their biggest non sequitur out now, uh, Christopher Hitchens and uh, Sam Harris, they're the big proponents of this. 
They feel that if they can slay the dragon of organized religion, an unworthy opponent, they have therefore slain God. But this presupposes, Alex, that you cannot have God without religion, which is too ridiculous to even comment upon. A 2010 Pew National Poll showed that over 30% of Americans who do not belong to any organized religion still believe very strongly in God. The antithesis of God is no God, not no uh, uh, religion. But these atheists come up with one non sequitur after another. They're, uh, they're almost vapid. Uh, theism's got that powerful, powerful argument of first cause. It's very difficult to get around. 